All right, so let's begin. Uh, the following data represent the amount of time in minutes a random sample of eight students took to complete the online portion of an exam in a particular statistics course. Compute the mean, median, and mode. <clears throat> As I stated, your final exam starts for the from the chapter on normal probability, but I said there is something that is important to test as well, which you should know how to find the mean and median and be able to tell which one is a better measure of center. You know the mean gets affected by outliers, so it's not resistant to outliers, and that's why when we have outliers, we should use the median instead of uh, the mean. So how to find mean and median? We can do the calculator, or you can simply use a stat crunch. If you click here, open in stat crunch, and watch, guys, how easy it is to do <coughs> stat crunch. You just go to stat, summary statistics, columns, and select the variable, compute, and you get everything more than what you ask for. Okay, he says he wants the mean, median, and mode. Mean is right here, 97.0875. So you just write it right here. How many decimals? He said two decimal places. Zero nine. Let's bring the rest of them. Uh, <clears throat> median is right here, 96.9. And the mode, it doesn't give you the mode. You have to figure out the mode on your own. So the median is 96.9. Okay, do we have a mode here? Do you see any numbers that repeat, guys? No, so what's what the answer would be? The mode does not exist. <clears throat> Match the linear correlation coefficient to the scatter diagram. The scale on the X and Y axis are the same. This question is from chapter four for my students taking section 98, 99, and this is from chapter nine for my students in the synchronous class. Which one do you think the correlation coefficient is one where we have a perfect correlation where all the points would fit on the line? Do you guys agree that will be number three? So that would be three. Where do you see a stronger correlation, guys, with one or two? Where do you think the points gather toward the line more? With two. With two, definitely. So that's going to have the higher R, which is uh, uh, 0 0.787. It's going to be for one. And the next stronger one will be two right here. The higher the R, the more aligned the points to be right on a line. So that's that's the idea. Match the linear correlation coefficient R with the scatter gram. It's, it's very weak. When R is very close to one, we have a very weak relationship. So it should be easy for you guys to guess which graph represents this R. Very weak linear relationship when R is close to zero. I don't think B is weak, and I don't think C is weak, and D is perfect. So it must be what? A. A pedestrian, a pediatrician, <clears throat> wants to determine the random, the relation that may exist between a child height and head circumference. She randomly selects eight children from her practice, measures their height and head circumference, and obtain the data shown in the table. Compute parts A through E. Okay. The, uh, if the pediatrician wants to use the height to predict head circumference, determine which variable is the explanatory variable and which one is the uh, response uh, variable. Do you guys know which one is the uh, response variable, which one is the response and which one is the explanatory variable?
The height will be the explanatory. Exactly. The independent variable is the first one. And the response variable, the one that responds to the independent variable, it's called the dependent variable. So that is correct. Okay, a draw a scatter gram. I'm gonna show you how to do this with the static crunch and I'm gonna show you also how to do it with the calculator. So let's go to static crunch. I mean, it's convenient to use static crunch when we're not in the classroom and we don't have access to, we have access to computer at home. So regression. Simple linear, the X variable is the height. The Y variable is the head circumference. And I've just hit compute. And I'm gonna see the scatter plot. You will see it in a second. Okay, look, you get R, correlation coefficient, you get R squared. You get the estimate of error, SE, if you ask for it, and you get for the equation. Why he doesn't write why he writes the verb the system writes you know just whatever the variable is called so y equals 12.0138 plus 0.178 x so this would be the equation so if you are to write the equation here guys it will be this let's round to two decimal places so it'd be 12.01 plus 0. 2, 0, x, that would be your equation. So this is the y, and this is the x. If the label of your columns were x and y, it will do x and y for you. Okay, let me show you the scatter plot. There you go, that's the scatter plot. These are the points. So once you do the scatter plot, you go back and try to match it with the, with the question. So this is how we do it using a static runs. So how do you do that using the calculator? So let me show you how to do it with the calculator. So you go to stat, edit. We're gonna go to L1, clear. And we're gonna enter the data in L1. So, so let's resume recording here. <laughs> So y hat equals what? 88.41 minus 3.14x. If he gives you the number of absences, x equals 5. How would you find y, guys? What do you do? We just substitute with the x for 5 and calculate it. Exactly. You just substitute x equals 5 and get the grade. So that will be y hat equals 88.41 minus 3.14 times five. And if we do this, we can do it right here. 88.41 minus 3.14 times five, enter. 72.7, all right, there you go. Okay, so that would be the answer. Uh, let's go to the next part and see what he wants here. Hey, Mr. Bazzi, if it gives us like, for example, to put uh, 2.5, can we still do that? Oh yeah, definitely. Because it's still between zero and nine. Exactly. Yeah. It, okay. As long as, as long as as long as this number is between zero and nine, you are allowed to do a substitution in the equation. This is good. You brought this up, and I think it might come up later. If he asks you to find the value of y when x is fifteen, you say that's not uh, reasonable to do that because the fifteen is outside of the range of values. This equation, guys, is only good for values that go from as low as zero to as high as nine. We don't know if this model will work, you know, just beyond that. So that's why it might, but we, we don't do it. So yes, you can do that. So the predicted final grade is 72.7, as I got, guys. What is the observed final grade, the actual one? It's 72.6. What's the difference between 72.6 and 72.7, guys? 
Point one, well, yeah, point one, if not even one point, point one. So that means this model is very good. It's, it's pre the prediction are very close to the actual. When someone, you know, just forecasts, you know, just something and it turns out to be true, you say, oh yeah, wow, their predictions are very accurate. Okay. And now uh, he wants us to check which one is the correct one. So you notice guys, when I show you the scatter plot, that was, uh, that was the, the graph. Would it be reasonable to use the least square regression line to predict the grade for a student who has missed 15 classes? Well, no, because 15 is outside of the range. And look what the answer is. 15 missed class periods is outside the scope of this model. All right, we'll go to the next one. Oh, now R square. So let me clear this. Suppose a doctor measures the height X and hits circumference Y of eight children obtain the data below. The correlation coefficient is 0 0.984 and the least square line is 0 0.265 X plus 10.223. Compute the coefficient R squared. Guys, you don't need to do the math uh, again or put them in the calculator. We already gave you R, so R squared is just square 0 0.984. square and put two, there you go. So let's make it uh, round to one decimal place. So 96.8%. If I wanna change this to a percent, it will be 96.82, but he says one decimal place, so it will be 96.8. Interpret the coefficient of determination. Okay, let me tell you how to interpret that for any questions that you might have. You get R square and you change it to a percent. For this one, it's 96.8%. And without even looking at part B, what he's asking us to do, look what you say. You say 96.8% of the variation in the Y variable can be explained by the variation in the X variable using the regression line. So now, if you are to select, what's the Y variable? It's the head circumference. You put the height, it will be wrong is explained by the least square regression model. Well, even he made a shortcut here. Okay, now with normal probability, determine whether the following graph can represent a normal density curve. Yes or no, guys? Does this look like the normal curve or it doesn't meet the requirements? No. No, because it crosses the x-axis. It can't cross the x-axis. The normal curve, guys, that you've been seeing since chapter seven is this. This is the normal curve. That's the normal curve. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Well, you agree with me that it's not the normal curve either. And to use this. A study was conducted that results in the following relative frequency histogram. Determine whether the, or not the histogram indicates that a normal distribution could be used. Does it look like bell-shaped, guys? Yes. Yes, it looks like a bell-shaped watch. Doesn't have to be perfect, but... Here you go. Well, I curved it a little, I shouldn't. Yes. So the histogram, so a normal distribution could be used as a model for this variable right here. You choose B. Let me choose B because it won't allow me to move if I don't choose something. Okay, we'll clear the very drawings. The relative frequency histogram represent the length of phone calls and George's cell phone during the month of September. Determine whether or not the histogram indicate that a normal distribution could be used. Because again, it, it looks like a normal, it doesn't have to be perfectly normal guys. It, it's, if it is approximately normal, then you can use it. So the answer is yes.
The graph of the normal curve is given. Use the graph to identify the value of mean and sigma. Mean is the value that sits right in the middle. It's 100. So it is 100 right here. And the value of sigma. You know that the curve from the mean spans the three standard deviation to the right and three standard deviation to the left. So if you go from 150, look, it looks like it's 15. 15, 130 to 145, 15, 145 to 160, 15. So the standard deviation is 15. Uh, draw a normal curve with the parameters labeled. So the mean is 65 and the standard deviation is 15. Which one would that be? It can't be this, the mean is 80, not this. Okay. Would you guys agree with me if I pick D? Because it goes 15 yeah. down, up, 15 down. Not this one. This goes to 95. So that must be D. Choose the correct graph below. Shade the region that represent the portion of plans that, change, that charge less than $50. Less than 50, well, it can't be this. And it has to be the mean of 65, remember, guys. Maybe D. So, will be D, I agree. Select the correct choice below and fill in the answer box to complete your choice. Uh, the probability is 0 0.1587 that a randomly selected cell phone that is in the population is more than, okay, let's see, let's do this one. See, he says, select the correct choice below and uh, that a randomly selected cell phone plans in this population is more than or less than $50 a month. So it's, it's a continuation of this. Well, guys, you know, from 65 and below, it's 50%. And from 65 and above, it's 50%. So if you choose, the probability is if 0 0.51587 that a random selected cell phone in this plan is more than $50 per month. Let's see what's gonna happen. More than 50, look what more than 50 is. That can't be just 15%. It's a lot more than 50%. So it would be wrong. So it must be what? Must be B. Any number that is less than the mean, and you're trying to find the probability that is less than that number is going to be less than 50%, because at the mean, you have exactly 50%. So look, less than 50, it looks reasonable. This is an area which is. Uh, uh, less than 50%. And the reason why I'm just talking about 50 because he says, suppose the area under the normal curve to the left of X is 0 0.587. To the left guys means less than, to the right is means greater than. So once you see the word left, it's always a less than. And to the right of, left of, right of, it's a greater than. And here, the probability is 0 0.1587 that the random selected cell phone is less than 50 because it's to the left of 50. Okay, let's go to the next question. Here. Uh, very similar question, draw a normal curve with the parameters labeled, and he wants 59 and 19. Well, if you do 59 plus 19, that should give you 78, so that must be this one, C, if you agree with me. Shade the region represent the proportion less than 40. Less than 40, guys. Uh, this is too much here, 40, let's see. That would say D and select the correct choice below. 
Suppose that the area under the normal curve to the left of x equal 4 is 0 0.587. So it's going to be the probability is 0 0.1587 that a randomly selected cell phone is less than what was the amount $40 per month. All right. What's the probability of X greater than 42 if he gives you the mean and the standard deviation? Now we're going to come to the calculator. Any question of a normal probability, you can answer using the normal CDF function. So in order to use this one, normal CDF. OK, we need a lower bound. We need an upper bound. We need a mean and we need a standard deviation. More than 42 means, guys, you're starting at 42. So that's your lower bound. Upper bound is you can use as large as you want. So it's going to be something like that. This is the, OK, the mean is 50. This is the 42. And we need higher, more than 42. We need this area. You can see, guys, on the right, there is no limit. You can go million, billion, etc. So put 42. I tell my students, put a million always. I use a million or a trillion. You can put a number. Then put the mean, which is 50, and put the standard deviation. So let's do that. We're going to go to second. where the calculator is faulting. Just one second, the calculator is not responding. Hmm. Let me pause this for one second and try to fix it. So, second, Normal CDF, you need lower bound. We agree it's what, 42. Upper bound, it's already there. Mean, 50. Standard deviation, 7. And then paste, and that would be your answer. OK. Any questions about which of the following normal curve represent the probability of X greater than 42? Do you guys agree with me? It's A because it doesn't stop at 50. Greater than 42, it goes from 42 and forever. And then you pick the answer, which is 0 0.87. Uh, how many decimal places, four decimal places, so it would be three, five. And here you go, you get the full answer here. What's the probability of X less than 45? Uh, well, less than 45, guys, you should agree with me, it is going to be this. That's a less than 45. How do you find it? So it's going to be normal CDF. And then it's going to be we need the lower bound, which is from the left. So you put negative million. Why the entire is acting up? Check on my speed. Okay. Negative a million. I'll just put him in the calculator. He's not letting me do that. So second and variable, normal CDF, enter. So negative a million. Make sure to use the proper negative sign, guys. Enter. And then we go up to 45. Enter. And leave the mean and the standard deviation the same, 50 and 7. No, it's not 50 and 7. It's 48. 
and then the standard deviation is nine here. There you go. Enter. 0 0.3694. Now guys, if you don't have this calculator, you have the older calculator, you're gonna go to second and normal CDF. The normal CDF function, it's gonna pop up. And it just, it's gonna pop up like this, normal CDF. I have no idea why this is acting up. So normal CDF, and then you will not see a window. So you just input, you put negative a million, then you put a comma, then you put the 45, then you put a comma, just like here. And then you put the 48, and then you put the standard deviation and close it. So it's just fill in, you know, just the four values in there. And you should get uh, the answer. All right, let's go to the next one. Did you ever resume recording after uh, you fixed the calculator? Probably I didn't. Okay. <laughs> yes, we did. We're good. Uh, probability of X between 35 and 63, guys. That should be an easy one. So just go to normal CDF. I'm just gonna write down what you do here. And you put the lower bound, which is what? Uh, 35. The upper bound, which is 63. Then you put the mean, which is 50. And then the standard deviation is seven. And then you do the calculation on the calculator. Don't put this answer on the test because the computer will not be able to recognize this as an answer. You just want the answer with four decimal places. And which one will uh, will mimic you, not just what trying to do, guys? I think it is B, as you can see, from 35 to 63. This is not correct in C. It goes 63 all the way down, less than 63. And A means less than 35 or more than 63. So our answer is right there. All right. More on probability. This is very, very important problem, guys. So I'd like you to pay attention to this one here. The number of chocolate chips in an 18 ounce bag of chocolate chip cookies is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 1252 and a standard deviation of 129. Uh, chips. So the mean uh, so I'm not sure if it is Zoom or the internet that's doing this. It should write, you know, just smoothly. And this is the standard deviation right here. What is the probability that a randomly selected bag contains between 1,000 and 1,500? So if you guys doing this, you just go to second, variable, normal. You don't use normal PDF. It's always normal CDF. 1,000 and 1,500. Okay, here's 1,000. Enter. 1,500. Enter. Uh, 1,252. Enter. And sigma is 129. And paste and enter, and that's your answer. You just put it here. Make sure to round as required, nine, four, seven, three. Okay, what's the probability randomly selected bag contains fewer than 1,100? Okay, fewer. You're gonna go less than, when you would go less than, you begin with negative a million. Put as many zeros as you want, 1,000, and just keep the rest, which is 0 0.0254. Uh, C, what well, a proportion, proportion means the probability. So the, the reason why I like this question, because it gives you the word proportion, which means probability. So what's the probability the bags contain more than 1,200? So again, normal CDF. So more than 1,200, we're starting at 1,200 and going the sky the limit. So the, your next number will be the million and then leave the rest alone. 
0 0.6566. A bag that contains 1,000 chocolate chips is in what percentile? Any ideas? So we use normal CDF, the same, lower, minus. Less than 1,000. You need to figure it out less than 1,000, yes. So there's what, so he wants, when he says the percentile, he wants what's the probability that X is less than 1000. Did we answer this? We didn't, so we're gonna do it. Second and distribute normal CDF. So a percentile guys means like if you score in the 80th percentile means 80% of people scored below, uh, below you below you not just what, what whatever score you have so we need the probability of x less than 1000 so let's see less than 1000 guys so you need negative a million to begin with always the less than you begin with the negative a million then you put a thousand here and then paste okay so two point uh, if I want to change it to a percent, it will be 2.5. So it's a very low uh, percentile. Oh, to the nearest integer. So what does this round, guys, the 2.5 to? To three. Three. That's why we see third. Now, I, now it makes sense. All right. Clear. Uh, pretty much the same question, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do this. I'm just gonna put some answers there so it doesn't it let me ex escape. All right, we'll do one more here. I put a lot of question there because I felt that it's good to review this chapter. It's been a while. A study found that the mean amount of time cars spent in drive through of a certain fast food restaurant was 152.6 seconds. Assuming drive through times are normally distributed with a standard deviation of 32. All right. What is the probability the randomly selected car will get through the restaurant drive through in less than 115 seconds? So guys, you got the formula right there. Oh, again, so this is going to be normal CDF. I'm going to show you what the arguments are going to be. Less than 115 seconds. So you start with negative a million, comma, 115, comma, mean, which is 152.6, and then comma, 32. Then you input this into the calculator and you can do that. And by the way, guys, you can also use a static crunch. If you have access to static crunch, you can use a static crunch and what we call the normal calculator to uh, find the answer. If time permits, I will show you uh, how to use a static crunch. Okay, now we need to fix this. Yes. So for this one, when he asks you to find a proportion of cars spent between two and three minutes, and we're already using seconds in the problem, you have to change into seconds. That's why you get a very strange probability. So it's gonna be second and stat, sorry, second in variables, normal CDF, two will be 120 seconds, three will be 180 seconds, and Based. Now it makes sense. It's zero point six four or six five. Would it be unusual for a car to spend more than three minutes in the restaurant's drive through? Unusual, unusual event, guys, is when the probability is less than five percent. 
If the probability is more than 5%, then no, it's not unusual. In order to figure out whether this event is unusual or usual, you have to find the probability that X is more than three minutes. So you have to go here, second, distribute, sorry, second in variables, normal CDF. We need the probability of X bigger than three. Bigger than three, we start with three, which is 180 seconds. And then we put a million. And then the rest is the same, nothing changes. Okay, what's the probability here? Well, that's not less than 5%, so no, it's not unusual. The probability of car spends more than three, see, he's asking you actually and hinting you to find this probability is 0 0.196. So it wouldn't be unusual since the probability is more than 0 0.05. If it was less than 0 0.05, then yes, it is unusual. Okay, now we're doing sampling distribution, working with the mean of the sample means. If you have the mean of the original population, a standard deviation, and you are asked to find the mean of the sample mean and sigma of the sample means, the mean of the sample means will be the same as the mean, which is 76, but the standard deviation guys will be the original standard deviation 14, but divided by the square root of 49, which is seven. So 14 over seven is two. So if you change this one to two, that would be the answer. So always when you work with samples, if he asks you about, you know, just a sample mean, you use the same mean as the original population, but the standard deviation will be a lot smaller. It will be 14 divided by square root of N. Sigma of X bar equals Sigma over square root of N. That's the formula. Okay, clear. Determine the point estimates of the population proportion, the margin of error for the following confidence interval and the number of individual in the sample with the specified characteristic X for this sample size. So he gives you the lower bound, the upper bound, and he gives you the sample size. The point estimate of the population proportion guys is called P hat. And to find the P hat, you add the lower bound and then the upper bound and divide by two. So your answer will be 0 0.2. Always, when he gives you the lower bound and the upper bound of the interval and asks you what was a point estimate, you just add the two values and divide by two. Plus 0.492 and then divide by two. Okay, it would be 0 0.39. Margin of error. If you have the interval, guys, any interval, you want to find the margin of error, you subtract the lower from the upper and divide by two. So it will be 0.492 minus 0 0.288. Enter and then divide by two. Don't forget to divide by two. This is how the intervals are constructed on this basis. All right. Oh, I didn't do the last part. I'll go back to it. Uh, the number of individuals in the sample with the specified characteristic. Well, the point estimate P hat, the sample proportion was 0 0.69. And if you wanna find, you know, just how many successes we have, you take the 0 0.69 and multiply it by 1500. If you do 0 0.69 guys, times 1500, look what you're gonna get. I'm gonna get 1,035, which is this one right here. 